was going to give a little lighter note to my talk after this wonderful presentation. Um, <coughs> I'm really happy to present this uh, project and I want to introduce my co-author, Claudia Tomelo, who is here. Um, <coughs> we've had uh, the great opportunity to work with Search and we were hired by uh, Search to conserve this uh, <coughs> large 50 foot long aluminum um, sweet boat. And um, what I want to say is that I, I have spent 30 years of my life working on uh, military heritage and uh, mostly underwater. So it was interesting to work on this particular project because, you know, um, on uh, most um, maritime projects, anything that floats, uh, you have to make the uh, difference between what is going to be preserved, functioning in water, and what is going to be taken away from the original context and placed in a different environment. And um, I'm trying to switch slide. It's up and down, right? Okay, thank you. Sorry, I was working so long. Um, the case of um, this particular boat, um, which we call PCF-1, because it was the number one made uh, between 1965 and uh, 1972. Uh, out of 183 that were made in total, this is PCF-1. So this is not the one right here, but this is showing you one of those um, sweep boats. The sweep boat is the equivalent, if you want, in shorter terms of uh, the Schnell boat, for instance of World War II, it's much smaller. It's made of aluminum, which is slightly different, extremely light, not really seaworthy. This is more for brown water. And um, what's interesting is that it's made of aluminum. The only thing that is not made of aluminum is the gun turret, for good reason. <laughs> the um, boat is made of aluminum plates, um, 5086 is the Alclad uh, nomenclature for this particular alloy, and it is very important to talk about this alloy for the restoration project, and I will, I will tell you why. Um, PCF-1 was uh, moved um, from uh, Coronado, California, where it was used as a training boat uh, during the Vietnam War. It never went to Vietnam. And um, it was um, uh, deaccessioned uh, in uh, 1994, 1994, and um, um, put on the uh, Anacostia uh, River Walk outside the uh, Washington Navy Yard, as you can see right here. It was dedicated in uh, 98. The boat looks in pretty good shape. However, you had a lot of numerous problems and our contract was to um, restore the exterior of the boat. Um, it's in itself a huge task, especially if you're working on a base that is very active and even though it's slightly outside the base, it is considered part of the base and you have people doing their jogging in the morning. It's a very lively place. And so you have to take all of that into consideration when you're uh, trying to restore such a large artifact. So um, one of the things is that you had, I'm going back to uh, the design. You had several uh, types of sweep boats, Mark I, Mark II, and Mark III. And just the way to remember what, how you differentiate a Mark I, which is this one in particular with Mark II and Mark III, is that the viewing ports on two and threes are wrong, and these are not. So that's the easy way to uh, differentiate them. 
Uh, the coding, which we don't know if the coding that we had seen in 2014 was original or not, but what we could say that the coding was failing in number, numerous areas and um, the um, epoxy was uh, blanching and, um, and, 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 and failing in areas where the, the, the hull was really corroded, uh, particularly near the bilge of the boat. You can see the clear separation between the layers. And um, so it was really um, very typical of that boat uh, to see those localized uh, failures all around. <coughs> so what we decided to do was to find the best possible way to remove that paint. We didn't want to do any touch up. We thought that the best way to ensure the long-term stability of the boat, even though it's not a floating boat anymore, we wanted to treat it as such and provide the best possible coating. But for that, we had to remove the coating. And removing the coating can seem like a straightforward task, but in fact, it is not. And uh, especially if you're working on aluminum, you have to take into consideration the material. And as we know, aluminum is very soft. And <coughs> the uh, 5086 alloy that I was referring to uh, is called Alclad. Alclad is a, an Alcoa nomenclature. That means that you have a sandwich of hardened aluminum in the center of your sandwich and on the exterior you have almost pure aluminum. And this pure aluminum is protecting the core of your boat and it's providing cathodic protection during corrosion. So you see where I'm going with that. The way to clean the hull is extremely important because if you start abrading this protective layer that had already suffered, it would have led to really a more endangered metal after cleaning than it was before. So uh, I'm just showing you here uh, the scaffolding, a full scaffolding access uh, to the uh, crew and uh, also giving uh, the opportunity for people who do their jogging on the uh, Anacostia uh, River walk to uh, go through, you, you see that little door over there to your right. Uh, for those who know the place, uh, they will um, easily recognize. Um, the way we enclose the area was also very important because we had really uh, restrictions uh, from the Navy to work on, on that boat and, 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 and do our work. In, in the background, you can see, by the way, the John Barry that in 2016 was unfortunately uh, taken to Philadelphia and scrapped. So it gives you an idea of, of how fragile this uh, military heritage can be, especially if it's floating. So luckily for PCF-1, it was placed on uh, pylons and uh, it's, it's on the ground. So I'm, I'm repeating, but this is a very important difference when you're working on maritime heritage. Um, we decided to go uh, with a, a technique that is um, essentially ultra high um, water jetting, uh, meaning, um, essentially using pressures that are in the range of 30,000 to 40,000 PSI to remove the coating. To give you an idea, if, you have, um, uh, if you're using a, a gas-powered uh, pressure washer on your house, most of the time, you, I mean, the most you could probably get is 3,000 PSI. You're looking at pressures that are 20 to 25 more powerful for the removal of the coating. And uh, this technique is very uh, useful for the removal of uh, surfaces such as aluminum. And it has sh been shown in the past that this is one of the best techniques to achieve that. Um, you've got the gun right here that is um, uh, used by uh, 
the, the, the team and the, the nozzle is rotating at uh, 3,000 RPMs. So that gives you an idea of, of the, the, the pressure and the, um, the, way, the way it works. You can also see the anti-skid uh, coating on top of the boat um, right, right there. You can look at it. Um, this is a team working on the removal of the coating. Also, we had requirements from the Navy to collect all the effluent and make sure that, that none of the water would get in the river and, and, and would be collected during you know, all the, the work. The work took about two weeks from start to finish, just to show you how quickly uh, water jetting is compared to other techniques. If we had used blasting, like I said, would not have been a good idea in terms of preservation of that alplad layer but also we would have produced probably around five tons of uh, dried material, whatever it is, uh, garnet or um, aluminum oxide, you name it, but, but, but solids that would have uh, been used with all the consequences of, of damaging the boat. So you can see the water jetters on the job. You can see how the hull is being cl cleaned you're looking at a very thick coating here, extremely hard, epoxy is extremely hard, difficult to remove. If you're using chemicals, you might also affect the aluminum. So you really have to find the right window and, and water jetting is also a good technique for cleaning the salts, stabilizing the metal that has been in contact with seawater. So it's, it's, it's a good technique in that regard as well, but it has to be used very carefully like anything else. It's not the tool, it's how to use the tool that is important in conservation. You can do a lot of damage with a scalpel. So um, you can see the progress of the work and what's, what's really interesting is that it's a sort of forensic study here of the hull and you are able to see the welding, you can see the, the, the way the hull was assembled, you can find markings and uh, you can see uh, the water jetting here removing different layers of coating and leaving the metal behind. Here you've got examples of clean areas that are showing you on the top left, for instance, a weld that has corroded and you have those uh, filing marks that are original to the time the boat was made. On the top right, you've got a plug that is clear and very visible. You see a little bit of the green lack of the water jetting the standard that we used, um, which is a NACE standard, was calling for a very clean surface, meaning not everything, every bit of paint would be removed, but, 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 but the water jetting standard uh, that we used called for an extremely clean surface, so the new coating would really adhere and, and would be long lasting. Uh, bottom left, you have uh, original corrosion, and you can tell that because you still have paint over there, you see? So you can tell that this corrosion has, was, was pre-existing, and on the right, you have runoffs, and you've got an area that was repaired, and you see uh, almost as if it had been repaired yesterday, uh, the, the two marks, and, and, and you can really read this surface and learn a lot from it. Another testimony to water jetting is that you were able to find the original alclad metal and the stamp. Uh, that gives you an idea of, of the, uh, uh, the ability to, to clean the surface without damaging it. And you, by using the least abrasive technique, we were able to really uh, achieve wonderful results, but also uh, <laughs> get, get some unexpected uh, drips I mean, not necessarily due to the water jetting, but just due to the fact that this boat had been uh, placed outside for many years and corrosion in the bilge was quite extensive. And so it revealed all those uh, holes in the hull. And of course, it didn't take long for us to understand that it was related to the area of the bilge where um, dirt and water collects and create a corrosion line. So this, is, this uh, um, uh, 
differential aeration between the uh, water in the bilge and the area that is out of the water creates this sort of pitting corrosion that is quite typical. Uh, well, we spent a lot of time uh, in the bill trying to clean as much as possible, but once again, our goal, our, 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 our contract was not to do that, but we could not not do it because we had to look and document and, and let the client know what was going on, and we did our best to uh, remove the water and uh, be able to get rid of the oil as well and, and dispose of all those materials and, and, and treat them off-site. Um, we didn't do any welding. If the boat had been uh, uh, used for, um, um, uh, if the boat had, 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 had been, been used to navigate, it could have been a totally different thing. But in that particular case, we decided not to do any welding to a hull and just patch those holes with a, an ap appropriate um, uh, a, 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 um, a polyester uh, material uh, designed uh, for aluminum. And uh, we, we moved on. Um, we can see the pilot house being cleaned uh, during uh, after water jetting here. Uh, the cleanness of the surface is quite amazing. And uh, of course, you have to be careful if you're uh, water jetting around rubber or other materials that could be damaged. So you really have to have a good team of people well aware of what, what your goals are. Um, because otherwise you could really create, uh, like anything else, uh, create damage to the surface of the softer materials. Um, we decided to go with an uh, industrial coating and, and typically uh, several uh, coats of primers of different colors so you can see what you're adding and you measure the dry film, thickness of the film as you go until you meet the manufacturer's recommendation and um, as, as you know, epoxy is not really resistant to um, uh, UVs, and so we have to top coat it with a polyurethane. Uh, this is what we uh, uh, usually do. Um, otherwise, uh, your, your coating would fade and start to choke and, uh, and, 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 and break down. So those things are quite important as well to keep in mind. The system that you're using, the way to apply it, the relative humidity, the thickness of your coating, uh, all those things are, are extremely important. <coughs> well, you have uh, a view of uh, the, the team working on the uh, application of the paint. Um, we couldn't spray because the Navy didn't want us to spray. And that's understandable because, you know, it would airborne particles, people would breathe the, the, those things and uh, you could have your, your car ne nearby coated with a beautiful haze gray, and they, they didn't like that. So, uh, of course, everything was applied using other means and, and rolls and rolling, rolling and, 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 and brushing. Uh, you have a view of, of the hull right here with, with, you know, of course, number one, because we have uh, this, uh, uh, this is w what it is, and really proud of having number one there. Um, the, the colors are the colors that the Navy uh, requested and the, these are the original uh, colors of the Swiss boat. Um, you can have details here of, of the hull after uh, painting. You've got the uh, anti-skid uh, coating that was reapplied to the deck. There was also a gun that was made of, of, of rubber and, 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 and the poor gun had totally uh, ployed and, uh, and the museum decided to replace uh, the, uh, the, the fake gun with a, a, a more rigid version, <laughs> let's put it that way. And they did and, and, and it looked great. Um, another view of, of the boat uh, after uh, of the deck with the anti-skid. Um, I don't know if many people are gonna go on that boat, but the Navy wanted to have something that would be as close as possible from the original. Uh, a, a side view of uh, the swift boat uh, after conservation. If you 
see it one, which is a vinyl. Um, um, this is not pain, it's actually vinyl and that's what they wanted. So we applied that at the end of the um, painting. That's one nice view of um, a swift boat in Vietnam. Um, I see that I, I, I have another four minutes. Uh, so um, I would be uh, quite happy, I would be quite happy to um, answer questions or I could, if you want me to talk more in depth about certain aspects of this project, I would be really happy to do that. You tell me what you want. Yes, for sure. Please let me know if you have questions. Yeah, sure. Well, uh, the um, the boat was uh, on, uh, mounted on uh, pylons, and uh, we were able to glue um, uh, polyethylene uh, sheets of um, uh, all uh, uh, under the the boat and the there was a slope that was uh, uh, made in such a way that uh, we would be able to collect uh, the uh, water jetting, uh, the water from the water jetting, essentially uh, as, as it when there was someone dedicated for uh, shop backing the water and transferring that water into uh, holding tanks. So that's how it went. There's no magical way to do it. It's got to be um, done as it goes. Uh, just on that point, the, um, the water in the holding tank was emptied, I think, twice. Um, 4,000 uh, gallons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so think. about eight tons of water were generated uh, during the process. And the water was tested. I mean, it was tested. Yeah, the paint was tested for lead first. That was the first concern. And then... Um, Oil, or you know other things like that, but uh -huh. we maybe we had to write a, a, a proper uh, safety claim before we we got the job, and one of the things was having the water tested for other things, and so it was taken off site, tested, and we got the results, and that was cleared. But we could not dispose of the water on the base, even if the water was crystal clear. It had to be taken out and disposed of, and 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 we have to give a certificate to ensure that it had been done and not done in. So um, <coughs> Other questions? Um, I used to live blocks from that, so I used to walk up and down that walkway all the time uh, and over projects. Uh, did you use a primer at all? Yes. Can you, you did. Could you yeah. go back over the paint system a little bit? Yeah, the paint system. Uh, again, the, the, the primer is uh, an epoxy primer. It's a Sherwin-Williams uh, Sherwin uh, uh, product. Uh, all the details are in the paper, and I can give you those things if you want to. Um, uh, the, the only thing that was not showing Williams was the anti-skid um, uh, material, which is a different brand. But essentially you go with two coats of epoxy and then a top coat of polyurethane. And so if uh, you're interested in knowing a little more about what we do, uh, I'm putting um, a, a little barcode that you can photograph and you will go directly to our Instagram account and find uh, our projects. But uh, essentially, um, uh, the, the name Terra Mare Conservation has a signification. Terra means earth and Mare means the sea in Latin as we figured out. And the reason why we call our company that way is because it's extremely important for us. We work extensively. I work a lot on the water, and Claudia has worked a lot on terrestrial sites. So for us, having a way to uh, bring uh, together those two fields was really important. And uh, this project is a good uh, illustration 
of this uh, type of approach. And I also want to uh, thank uh, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the team from the Navy Yard and uh, NHHC and the uh, team of the museum because they've been really helpful. Uh, those projects are extremely uh, well, difficult to put together uh, because of the, of the size of uh, the um, object that you're conserving. And um, I want to say also that um, the uh, long-term preservation plan doesn't stop here. Uh, doing what we did was a critical phase to put the boat back on track, so to speak, but there's a, a, a need for a long-term maintenance, making sure that a number of, of, of critical issues, partly particularly water getting into the hull, are um, covered because uh, otherwise um, it might cause problems. So um, thank you very much.